This is the brand new Trek Supercalibur lineup. Now, what's different about this lineup from the previous one is three main things. The bike now has a longer reach, a slacker head tube angle of 67.5 degrees, more travel, 110mm in the front and 80 in the rear, and it has two different grades of carbon, SL and SLR. The SLR is their highest grade, higher modulus rating carbon, meaning it's got a safer frame and more efficiency in handling on the trail. There is, however, a downside to modulus carbon. This is because of how high modulus carbon is made. It is made using a specialized heat application process with higher heat values, up to 57 MSI. However, while it's undisputable that stiffer frames are better for performance, a frame using this heat application process is often more brittle, causing it to snap more often. Perhaps not such a big issue for an XC bike, but certainly if you're doing tougher terrain riding, or if you just want to bounce your bike out a bit more, then don't go for one of these frames. But that's just my opinion. For now, we want to move on to the first bike in our lineup, the Supercaliber SL 9.6 made with a lower grade carbon frame. The fork is going to be a RockShox Recon Gold RL, and the tires are Trek's new St. Anne tires, not yet listed online, and they come on all bikes except the last one on our list. Gearing on our bike, we're going to have Shimano SLX M7100 derailleur and some Dior parts which include the shifter, the cranks and the chain. The brakes are going to be Shimano NT500 brakes which are surprisingly cheap and underperforming for this bike. And of course being an XC bike, all frames in this lineup are going to have room for two bottom mounts. But with that we move on to our second bike, the Supercaliber SL 9.7. The fork is going to be a RockShox Reba RL with a motion damper, a solo air spring and a remote lockout. Gearing is SRAM GX Eagle Axis T-Type for the derailleur. The rest is going to be all SRAM Eagle parts. For the brakes, we're going to have SRAM Bronze Level 2 piston brakes. Again, extremely underpriced, but we gotta move on. To the next bike, the Supercaliber SLR, which is the next step up of carbon, XT 9.8. The fork is going to be a Fox Performance 34 step cast with a float Evol fork, a grip damper and a dual remote lockout. The shock is going to be exactly the same as is the tyre. For the gears we're going to have E13 cranks, everything else is going to be Shimano XT M8100. For the brakes we're going to have Shimano Dior XT M8100 and again they're a little underpriced. The next bike is going to be the Supercaliber SLR 9.8 GX Axis. You can expect some SRAM Axis parts on here. The fork is going to be a RockShox Sid Debonair with a Rush remote damper. The shock is going to be the same. The tire is going to be the same as well. The gears are going to be Eagle Axis shifter and derailleur. The rest is going to be Eagle T-type parts. The brakes are going to be SRAM level bronze four piston brakes. The best we've seen so far. For now what we're going to do is skip two mid bikes and move on to the very last bike on our list, the Supercaliber SLR 9.9 XX Axis, the most expensive bike in the lineup. For the fork we have a RockShox SID Ultimate with a debonair spring and a charged race state damper. The shock is the same as before and for the gears we have a bunch of SRAM XX Eagle parts, including a chain, derailleur, cassette and shifter. For brakes, we're going to have SRAM level ultimate 4 pot brakes. And the tire, actually the description says nothing about it, but I'm going to guess it's a new Pirelli Scorpion. Make up your own mind and tell me in the comments. And with that, that's the end of the video. But before you leave, I have a small task for you. If you're watching on mobile, turn it to full screen and click on the logo in the corner. If you're on desktop, you can do this as well. Just click on it and then click the button to the right of it. Thanks for helping the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.